The Earth is shaped like a ball, or at least so you've been told by the education system, by the government, and by mass media. But is that really true? Well, there are a number of reasons why you might start to doubt that thought. There are many arguments that have convinced many really outspoken people that the Earth is not round, that it is instead flat. It is a flat plane. It's too bad that when you look at those arguments critically, they fall flat on their face. But here's some of those. Did you know that there is no real true photo of the Earth from space? We're taught that these images are, but even NASA themselves openly admit that all these images are done in Photoshop. They are composite, computer-generated images. No, no they don't. One guy said that about one image, but that doesn't mean that all of them are composites. Yes, Robert Simmons said in an interview, which is kind of hard to find, that, and I quote, Yes, it is photoshopped, but it has to be. And that sounds pretty damning without context, but lucky for us, we have the context. In that interview, Robert Simmons was talking about one image that he created, called the Blue Marble. He explained that this image is not a photograph, not that they ever tried to pass it off as such at all, but instead it is a composite, a 3D projection uh, compiled from a collection of images taken from the Terra satellite, which is in a polar orbit, or close to it, which would be impossible on the Flat Earth, by the way. But this isn't the only picture that is called the Blue Marble, which may be a source of some of the confusion. See, this is the first Blue Marble, an actual photograph taken during the Apollo 17 mission. And yes, this has been edited for color and to put north up, but we do have the original photograph. It looks like this. And if you look close, you can see all the discrepancies in each of them. How some of the continents do not match up in size and how the clone tool was used to create the clouds. Okay, I've said this all before, but perspective matters. See, the closer you are to the surface of a sphere, the less of the surface you can see before its horizon. So shapes on the surface look bigger the closer you are. This is simply a matter of the distance between the Earth and the camera, be it a real camera or a simulated one. NASA even took the liberty to Photoshop the word sex into one such cloud formation. This can be noticed when flipping their composite upside down and zooming in. Were they bored? Or is this the calling card of Disney, as we've seen them do such similar subliminal messaging in such children movies as The Lion King and Tangled? I'm coming to find that NASA and Disney have a lot in common. Perhaps in the case of The Clouds and the Tangled poster, there weren't any letters actually put in there, but instead you're perceiving them because it's a familiar pattern to you, a phenomenon called pareidolia. But in the case of The Lion King, those letters actually were deliberate. But you got the letters wrong. It's actually SFX because it was put in there by the special effects team, according to Tom Sito, one of the movie's animators. And Freemasons? Ugh. Every aspect of space footage is fake. We've seen water bubbles in footage and other discrepancies such as flimsy hatch lids, which clearly show this is not real whatsoever. Maybe you're just reading way too much into this because you want it to be fake. And that's not a hatch lid, that is a thermal cover, which is indeed flimsy. The hatch lid opens to the inside, which helps keep the high pressure in. Footage from the ISS is easily faked using a green screen and what is known as a zero-g plane, as I'm sure of other methods as well. The plane flies high up in the air and then does a basic nose dive, producing an environment where everything is just in free fall. How long do you think reduced gravity lasts on those flights? Because in a less than two hour flight, you only get about seven minutes of reduced gravity, and that's only 30 seconds at a time. NASA has live streams and videos that last hours. We can see here that this woman seems a little bit on edge and is clearly feeling unsafe, as I imagine most would in a plane that's in a free fall. 
And there's no way that you're just reading too much into this. Nations all over the world fake space, and it's just a money-making scheme. NASA alone pulled in a whopping $18.5 billion in 2016. Reason to lie? Yeah, very much. Okay, sure, NASA has a pretty big budget, I guess. But think about this. That's money that it's getting from the U.S. government. What you're forgetting is that NASA is part of the U.S. government. This isn't NASA milking money out of them. This is the government spending money on things that the government does. They're not making money, they're spending it. And it's only really about 1% of the U.S. federal budget. Last time I checked, a ball shape has to have a curve. Somewhere. But in fact, once you truly look, you will find none. Anywhere. There's none. Or maybe the Earth is so big and its curve so gradual that it's hardly perceivable to the unaided eye. The proof of this is in objects that can be seen from certain distances over water. Okay, I've seen quite a handful of flat earth arguments like this, and it pretty much always comes down to one or two things. That being that they underestimate how far away we should be able to see because their math is wrong because they don't really understand geometry, but also they fail to take into account atmospheric refraction. Okay, I'm not going to bother reading out everything that he just put on the screen, but to put it simply, you shouldn't be able to see Chicago from that far away. Okay, cool, but it's kind of funny that whenever you just do a simple Google search about this, you find a lot of pages talking about how this is a superior mirage. A mirage that can allow you to see farther than you usually could when the lower air is cooler than the air above it. Here is a video of the same skyline from the same place by the same guy from around the same date, showing that this is clearly a mirage and that it usually isn't there. I mean, why can't you see the bottom of the buildings in that image? How do you explain that on the flat earth? And certainly the lighthouse is one very great example. In his book, Proofs That the Earth is Not a Globe, Howard Hendry exposes this truth and gives us many good examples of so many lighthouses that should not be observable at certain distances and hidden behind an exact amount of curvature. Okay, I haven't read Hendry's books, but this is a really old argument that, again, comes down to the miscalculation of the Earth's curvature. The curve formula for the Earth is 8 inches per mile squared, and there's nowhere to be found anywhere at all. No, 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 that is not the formula for the curve of the Earth. That is a formula which is sometimes used to estimate the curvature drop for short distances. 8 inches per mile squared describes a parabola, as you'll be able to see if you graph this equation. But a cross segment of the round Earth would be a circle. So the farther the distance that you use this calculation for, the more incorrect and farther off the calculation will be. And that's a big reason why so many flat Earth calculations are just wrong. Hell, even this image that you just showed has a totally different formula. Assuming that this is correct, which it probably is, though I haven't bothered to check, the drop from a distance of 3,000 kilometers, as calculated by 8 inches per mile squared, will be off by 72 million kilometers, which is about 11,000 times the radius of the Earth, which is obviously impossible. But besides that, how is curvature drop significant when you're trying to figure out how far away you should be able to see things, because curvature drop doesn't tell you anything about how far away the horizon is or how much you should be able to see above it. Here, 
is the formula for an arc height, or the height of the curvature, if you will, for a given distance on the surface. Now, this does not take into account height of the observer, which will make you able to see farther, but this equation is infinitely more relevant than what flat earthers will show. And when you use this to calculate stuff, the results are far less shocking. Anyway, this video has gone on for long enough, and I'm not even halfway through the Flat Earthers video, so I hope you'll stick around for part two, but I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching. Goodbye.